Good morning. Thank you. Okay, we're going to get started. My name is Steve Hampton. Um, I'm the Environmental Stewardship Chair of the Faith, Compassion, and Justice Group here at University Covenant Church. Welcome. Um, we're really happy to, to have you all here. This is the third annual Cool Davis Interfaith Climate Conference. And, um, and just a, a few words of, uh, of uh, logistics before we get going. Um, the, th this is gonna be our main area right now for our speaker and our panelists. The, we're gonna have an excellent lunch over here later. And there are different workshops that start at, they start at one o'clock, is that right? Check your program. Um, there's some great workshops. And just so you know, there's different locations designated, and I'm gonna clarify what those are right now. The, um, the MP room far side refers to that corner over there. The, let's start here at the beginning. The hall classroom is room, what's the, what, Alex, what's after room 109? No, the next one. 108. It's the second door on the left down there. We're, we're hosting the cold weather shelter right now, so um, there might be some, some stray socks around and things like that, but um, all, all their stuff is in room 109. Um, so room 108 is the hall classroom. The near classroom is room 111, which is right out these doors right here. That's the near classroom, closer to the lobby. The library is called the library. That's in the hallway across the hall. And the MP room near lobby is gonna be this corner over here. And then I think we actually might use the lobby as well for one of the sessions. Um, so, um, yeah, so we, we come together in a time where gas is priced like they're gonna sell it for 50 years, and that's what they're, I guess, planning. Um, so we all need each other. And uh, so we're really happy that you're all here. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our youth pastor and Faith, Compassion, and Justice lead, Alex Wright. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. <clears throat> Thank you, Steve. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome again to the third annual Cool Davis uh, Interfaith Climate Conference. My name is Alex Wright. Um, as Steve said, I'm, I'm one of the pastors here at University Covenant Church, and we are delighted to host the conference this year and just so glad that you could be our guests. Now, while, while we come from many different faith traditions, uh, I believe one thing many of us share in common is a recognition that God has called us to be good stewards of the earth. Uh, this common vision is a foundation upon which we can unite, uh, working together not just to talk about climate change, but to move each other and our community to action. In my own tradition, uh, we believe that God is good and that God created and loves this world and everything in it, including us. And what's unique about us is we're the only part of God's creation that has the power to care for or destroy the world we've been given. Uh, we have the freedom to callously disregard the consequences of our lifestyles, or to respectfully reflect on how we might instead be agents of restoration. I've really appreciated my friend Steve, uh, who gave the opening remarks. I'd like to thank uh, for organizing and setting up the facility today. A lot of work obviously went into that. Um, I appreciate Steve because in the Christian tradition, uh, we talk a lot about giving and tithing, but we don't talk so much about what we do with the other 90% of our resources. Uh, Steve has really helped our congregation become more aware of the, that the choices we make regarding the 90% do matter. And, and I've been personally convicted by that question the last few years since Steve has started raising it. It's really been eye-opening to me that the actual consumer choices that I make, that we all make collectively, can have a profound effect on our environment and even our climate. And because it's that collective action that matters, it's imperative that we work together on climate issues. I believe the faith community is at its best when we work together towards the restoration and redemption of this world that is so near the heart of God. So today, may we catch a vision of how we may work together as a community to affect change in our culture. May we begin with ourselves by taking personal action. 
May the God who created and sustains this world forgive us for the ways we have failed to practice good stewardship of this planet. Unify us as a faith community and guide us on a path of creation care that will be honoring to God. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Lucas Frerix, a member of the Davis City Council. Uh, I'm going to be serving as MC today. Uh, <clears throat> so again, you've heard what a wonderful welcome from Pastor Wright, as well as uh, thanks so much, Steve, for your welcome as well. Uh, let's give a big round of applause to the University Covenant Church for hosting in their beautiful facility. So again, uh, we want to welcome everyone to the third annual Interfaith Climate Conference uh, sponsored by the YOLO Interfaith Alliance for Climate Justice. Uh, also, of course, want to thank Cool Davis uh, and, and again, UCC for hosting here. Uh, you know, we really, we gather at a critical time as we stand as the human species at the precipice of planetary climate chaos, uh, our work uh, is really to find a path forward uh, toward a, a fundamentally reimagined understanding of who we are on this earth, of course, and also in the ways in which we ought to live. Uh, where will we find the courage, the hope, and in fact, even the faith to ensure this transition? We're fortunate today to have acclaimed environmental philosopher and author Kathleen Dean Moore with us here as she explores these questions and guides us to meaningful action. The keynote address will be followed by an intergenerational panel, including uh, one of the panelists will be one of our former mayor, D J Davis Mayor Joe Cravoza, uh, but the vision, titled Visions of Effective Climate Change, and of course there'll be an opportunity for questions and answers from the audience. Three panelists will prevent, uh, present how they view the climate crisis and explain their ideas for effective climate action, especially in our local community and our region. After a delicious noontime lunch, there'll be many excellent workshops to choose from, and a little bit more on that later. Uh, also, of course, want to make sure that uh, we uh, thank everybody for being respectful for the variety of faiths and people represented here today. I want to issue a gentle yet important reminder to please use inclusive language, such as faith communities or places of worship, as opposed to simply mosque, synagogue, or church. Uh, inclusivity is a key tenet of our interfaith community here in Davis and Yolo County. I'm confident that this third annual conference will lead us to actions and changes at the personal, faith community, and larger community levels. So let's get started. First, I'd like to introduce uh, Chris Granger, Executive Director of Cool Davis. You want to come on up? And followed by Lorraine Vischer from the Unitarian Universalist Church of Davis. Come on up. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, some of you may know what Cool Davis is, and some of you may not know what Cool Davis is. Cool Davis was founded in 2010 in response to the Climate Action Plan of the city, um, and we are working to inspire our community to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, adapt to the changing climate, and to make a better life for all of us in this community. I wanted to reflect with you today just briefly about our role. Our role at community level, that is as a whole community, working with our city. At institutional level, so faith communities, business community, um, other community organizations. At neighborhood level, and then finally at household level. Cool Davis is touching all of these things with the way we are structured. We have a coalition made up of now 70 plus organizations in the community, which include many members of our faith communities. We also have many businesses and other community institutions participating. And now we are about to embark on a very serious campaign to reach households. But to do that, we want to make sure that we have a presence at every level in our community. You may have seen one of these out in the foyer. It is our checklist of actions related to three categories of action, transportation, consumption, and home energy. These are the things that we are challenging our households to get busy on. But many of you who are active in your faith communities know that 
your congregations, your, your, your um, uh, uh, institutions are working on your physical plants already and you're having those discussions together. And the work that you're doing is becoming visible to the members of your communities. So now I want to do something a little interactive that says a little bit more about what Cool Davis is about and what who Cool Davis is. So I would like you to um, respond by standing up to the following questions. So after you stand up, then we'll be done with that group and then we'll sit down. How many are here are joining us from outside of Davis, from another Yolo County community? Thank you for coming. How many are coming from Sacramento County or someplace further than Yolo County? Welcome. How many of you live west of 113? Turn around and look at each other so you can recognize each other when you see each other in the West Lake Village grocery store. <laughs> How many of you live north of Covell? Okay. How many in um, uh, on uh, uh, to keep, remain standing? How many? Put your hands up for those of you that are east of Anderson. Uh, I'm sorry, west of Anderson, west of Anderson, in that central area between Anderson and F, or over in Wild Horse. Okay, recognize, look at each other so you can recognize each other on your, maybe on your green belts. How about east of Poline and south of Covell? Hmm. How about west of Anderson and east of 113, but south of Covell? Does that mean Central Davis? That's, that's Central Davis? All right, there we go. All right. <laughs> How about south of I-80, all you South Davis folks? Ah, yes. <laughs> Who did I miss? Uh, east, all the way east, but north of, of I-80. So east of Poline. I did you, okay. I think I've got everybody, good. How many of you rent your home? You have different issues than people who own their home. How many of you, remain standing if this is true, live in multi-family housing? How many people own their home live in multifamily housing? That would be folks with condos. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> now, when, we come, when it comes to the content that we're working on, our transportation, our consumption, our home energy, what I have found is that everybody has their thing. You're, you are totally about food, or you're really, you're the energy Nazi in your family. Oop, I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, you are uh, all about bikes, or you have a really cool electric vehicle. So we're going to try just those categories. Who are our foodies in the group, in, in, in this? And you can, stand, you can uh, stand up for more than one of these things. You get to be more than one. Look at each other, because if we're going to deal with food issues in our community and the food footprint, here are our, here's the starting group for that. Foodies. Do we have any composting zealots in the room? I'm going to sit down. <laughs> How about, I'm going to ask you to sit down for a second. How about advocacy? Now, one of the things that I have found is that 
we have a lot of talking to do to our public leaders, both locally, state, national level. And the first thing we want to do is get out and, and tell people what we think. But we also have the work to do in our own personal lives. So how many of you are actively involved, besides on the, you know, the active stuff on your personal life, with advocacy, you know, it could be oil trains, it might be um, uh, general climate issues, it might be um, you know, other environmental issues. How many of you are active in advocacy groups? I want you to see that Jerry Braun, who is one of our best and most wonderful energy experts in the community, is also, you might only hear him talk about energy, but he's also working at advocacy level. We need to respect all of our work and encourage each other and thank each other for that work as we move forward. So last night we heard, and I think she's going to tell us again, that we need to pay attention to the things we love, things that we feel called to do, um, to be ready to be stretched, um, and to be kind to each other. And one of the things as I ride my bicycle around the community, which is very rhythmic, and I, it always, for some reasons, generates psalms and songs from my faith tradition. And recently, the thing that I keep hearing in my head is prosper the work of our hands. So I'll leave you with that. Thank you. We are Cool Davis, and Cool Davis is a verb, an action verb. Thank you. Next, we have Lorraine Vishner from the Unitarian Universalist Church of Davis, who's going to teach and lead us in a song. Thanks, Lorraine. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you for being here. You have the words to the chorus of this verse in your program. They're pretty easy. Hold on to each other, hold on strong. We gotta hold on to each other till the danger's gone. Hold on to each other all night long. Hold on to each other, got to hold on. I'll sing the verses to you, but I really hope that you'll uh, keep me company on that chorus, because that's what we gotta do, we gotta hold on. So please join me as soon as you get the hang of it. It's pretty simple, okay? Thanks. Okay. Are all my mics working? Hard times are coming. You can feel it in the air. You can read it in the paper. You can see it everywhere. Gonna be trials and tribulation, astonishment and shock. You're gonna need a strong foundation, need a solid rock. Here you go. You gotta hold on to each other, hold on strong. Gotta hold on to each other until the danger's gone. You gotta hold on to each other all night long we gotta hold on to each other got to hold on now you got the gist of it let's sing that through one more time we gotta hold on to each other hold on strong we gotta hold on to each other until the danger is gone we gotta hold on to each other all night long. We gotta hold on to each other. Got to hold on. Now 
it's easy to get lonely it's easy to get lost it's easy to get crumpled up towed away and tossed don't let yourself get isolated don't give up in despair don't run and hide just come inside you know you'll find us there come on sing with me we gotta hold on to each other hold on strong we gotta hold on to each other until the danger's gone we gotta hold on to each other all night long we gotta hold on to each other got to hold on even the tallest tree in the forest can make it on its own you're gonna need some friends around you when that wind begins a blowing it's gonna shake up all our branches it's gonna tug on all our roots till the only thing left standing is a love that's great and true we gotta hold on to each other hold on strong hold on to each other until the danger's gone we gotta hold on to each other all night long we gotta hold on to each other got to hold on now convince me come on we gotta hold on to each other you can do better hold on strong come on we gotta hold on to each other until the danger's gone we gotta hold on to each other all night long we gotta hold on to each other got to hold on Say it one last time. Got to hold on. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine, and thanks to the audience for that inspirational performance.